Have you ever wanted your own TV show? Have you dreamed of showcasing your talent for the world to see? Well, now you can. Have your own TV show. You can have your own 30-minute show. Not only will you be seen in the Detroit area, but you can be viewed worldwide. Be seen on WHPR Detroit Live, Comcast Cable Channel 91, on the web at tv33whpr.com, with the TV33 app, on Roku, Google TV, Apple TV, and on Amazon Fire TV. Act now. Time slots are limited. Sign up today and get a free replay with the purchase of your time slot. For more information, call 313-868-6612. Visit our studios and receive a free TV interview to promote your business, church, or organization by appointment only. Good afternoon, and it's a pleasure once again to be here on the airwaves of WHPR 88.1 FM. My name is Alex Albritton, and for those of you watching and go back 20 plus years watching and listening to this station, you know my voice and you know my face for sure. But again, it's an, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here, and I thank Mr. R.J. Watkins for this opportunity. I'm here for two reasons today. First and foremost is to share some information about 300 plus of our ancestors who were brutally massacred a little over 100 years ago in Greenwood, Oklahoma, June 1, 1921. It was known as Black Wall Street. And the reason it was known as Black Wall Street is because it was the wealthiest area in the country for black business people. If you can wrap your head around this, one dollar circulated 37 times before it ever left that 35 block, square block area known as Black Wall Street. That's tremendous power, tremendous power. And that's what they had until May 31st, 1921, when the Klan and U.S. Army, I might add, came in to destroy them. They burned down a 35 square block radi radius business district 35 square blocks, just imagine that, okay? That is downtown Detroit, probably times 10. Burned it to the ground. Mass graves were everywhere. They claim the body count was approximately 300. We don't know exactly. What we do know is, is that few, if any, survived. In 2006, I had the honor and the pleasure of interviewing a survivor of Black Wall Street on this very station. His name was Mr. James Durant. He was eight years old at the time. And I certainly hope he's still living. I don't know for sure. But what he shared with us that day was absolutely remarkable. He laid on the floor of a bus for those two and a half days to save his life. And when it was all over, he walked out and could not believe what he saw. There was devastation everywhere. A family, unbeknownst to him, a black family, raised him from the age of eight until he was an adult. 
He was fortunate enough to attend college and leave the Tulsa, Oklahoma area. He made his way to Detroit, got a job with the Detroit Public Schools, met and married a wonderful lady, had four daughters, and I was fortunate enough to know three of them. I went to school with three of them at Mumford High School. For many years, people thought that it was the Klan that murdered all those people in Greenwood, Oklahoma. But Mr. Durant shared something with us that day that was certainly eye-opening. It wasn't just the Klan. When he came out and saw all that devastation, he shared with us that he saw U.S. Army ordinance all over the ground, which told a very different story than it was just the Klan. It was the United States Army, hand in hand with the Klan, that murdered and massacred all those people. The 30 plus million dollars that was raised here recently by all those corporations to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Black Wall Street had to be given back. They should have donated that money to the survivors and kinfolk of Black Wall Street. That's what they should have done. But they didn't. $30 million was raised by some of the biggest corporations in this country to celebrate this Holocaust. Now, for sure, perhaps something will be done in the coming days, weeks, months, years to recognize that massacre in other ways. I don't know. I do know that there were television trucks and media from around the world in Greenwood, Oklahoma just two weeks ago from around the world and the very next day, the very next day, that story had passed the 24-hour news cycle and they all left. Can you imagine how the, the survivors of Black Wall Street felt? Can you imagine? But I, I felt a lot better about it myself because I knew that there was something quite different going on in the, how, in the U U.S. Senate and in the Congress in Washington, D.C. I knew that there was some pretty good things going on about Juneteenth. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into that in just a few minutes. Juneteenth, and so it appears, looks like it may well be a legal holiday. Should have been one many, many years ago. But if what I hear is correct, and I'm sure it is, they're going to make it a legal holiday. Just imagine, Juneteenth. That's when our freedom came anyway. Not July 4th. That's why I get so upset for years when I see people celebrating July 4th has nothing to do with the, with the freedom of black people. Nothing, nothing whatsoever. Juneteenth is when we got our freedom. And it was called Juneteenth because as most of you know, slaves were uneducated. And they can merely refer to June 18th or 19th as Juneteenth. 
Juneteenth. So when you mention things like Black Wall Street, Juneteenth, Rosewood, the chaos in Kansas that murdered hundreds of black people back in the late teens, early 20s. That's what, that's what they're talking about when they talk about critical race. They don't, they don't want it taught in schools. They, want, they don't want our, our kids to know their history. They want it forgotten about, just like Black Wall Street. It was never talked about until recent years. It was forgotten about as if it never existed. It's important to know your history so that you never relive it. You know, I don't, I don't get mad at Jewish people when they talk about we'll never forget. I take my hat off to them. I do. I take my hat off to them because they will never, ever, ever relive the Holocaust that was brought against them. Never, never. Nor should we. The Holocaust brought on our people, I firmly believe, is a hundred times worse than anything that's ever been done to the Jewish people. But much of it cannot be proven. The Atlantic Ocean line, the, the Atlantic Ocean is lined with black bodies. Lined with them. They, they threw our brothers overboard, fed them to the sharks as they were being brought to this country to live as slaves. There's a lot of history. I mean, a lot of history. And, I, and, I, and for those of you who watch MSNBC, and I know there are a lot of you out there that do, there's a sister by the name of Nicole Hannah Jones who has written a project known as the 1619 Project. And it talks in great detail about our <laughs> coming here, put it like that. Great detail. In fact, she has won a Pulitzer Prize for her work. I highly, highly recommend anybody that's watching to get the 1619 Project written by Nicole Hannah Jones. You owe it to yourself to know your history. Not just Black Wall Street. Not just Black Wall Street. But what happened to us, it certainly wasn't Christopher Columbus that brought us here. Nor did he discover America. Read the 1619 Project and you will find out, okay? He certainly didn't bring us here, but we were brought here, that's for sure, okay? But again, her name is Nicole Hannah Jones. Beautiful sister, beautiful sister. And I just applaud her effort. Uh, it took her years to write it. She is a staff writer for New York Magazine. And um, a greater candidate could not have been picked to receive a Pulitzer Prize. Outstanding work. Outstanding. There's something else I'd like to mention, and I'm going to go into greater detail about it in this time I've been given by Mr. R.J. Watkins. And that is what's going on in the United States Senate regarding our right to vote. This country is right on the, right on the cusp of losing its democracy, our freedom, our right to vote. And there's a United States Senator by the name of Senator Joe Manchin, a Democrat, I might add, 
who has decided to reach back into the ugliness of racism and allow the filibuster to live. The filibuster, for those of you who don't know what it is, the filibuster is a tool that white politicians used to use to prevent things like the Civil Rights Act from passing. They would talk for hours on end just to keep a vote from being taken. And Mr. Manchin, Mr. Manchin has decided to hold up John Lewis's uh, bill and the other bill that will preserve our right to vote that is before Congress as we speak. If these two bills are for whatever reason are not passed, we will lose our democracy. That cannot happen. Because if we lose our democracy, I'm telling you, the days will be as bad or worse than slavery. It just cannot happen. And I, I, I just, I see people on the street and I try my best, I'll stop and talk to them about it just to impress upon them how serious it is. Because there are folk that don't really know. This is do or die. We have to preserve our right to vote. Lord knows we fought and died to get it. We can't just give it away. And Donald Trump and others like him, that's what they want to happen. So I'm going to give you a phone number, and I want everyone listening to this program and the sound of my voice right now to call this number. This is the number to Senator Joe Manchin. And the number is area code 202 224 3954. Again, that number is area code 202 224 3954. That is the number to Senator Joe Manchin in Washington, D.C. Please, please call that number. You don't have to be a resident of West Virginia to, to make your voice heard. That's where he's from. He represents people in West Virginia. Call this number. Let them know that you want Joe Manchin to vote to pass John Lewis's bill because he's holding it up. He's the only Democrat that can make this happen. All the other Democrats are, are voting for it. But the Senate is so narrowly split, so narrowly split, it's just one vote that separates <laughs> them from the Republicans. We need this legislation. We need it. So again, that number is area code 202-224-3954. That is the telephone number to Senator Joe Manchin in Washington, D.C. He is holding up your freedom. He's not, he's not really representing people in West Virginia. Those people in West Virginia want him to vote the right way. But for whatever reason, he wants to, he wants to, he wants to get along with his buddies on the Republican side. Well, let me tell you, you make your, make your presence known. All the people that used to call this station or still call it, take this number down and call Senator Joe Manchin, please. This is a do or die moment. We can't let the worst happen. We cannot. In Detroit, as you know, 
in Detroit has been famous for its activism, okay? In recent years, it's been awful quiet. Let's ramp that back up because we need it. We desperately need it, okay? So I'm going to take a break for a couple of minutes. Uh, Mr. Engineer, I need you. And uh, I'll be back on the other side of this break. Again, my name is Alex Albritton. It's a pleasure to be your host again. Uh, and hopefully we can do this more frequently, okay? I miss it. I really do. I miss it a lot, okay? So stay tuned, and I'll see you on the other side of this break. Why did you get vaccinated? Be able to hug my mom again. I haven't been able to hug her in over a year. She's 92 years old and is in a nursing home. Thing is, she has dementia too, so it makes it hard. Window visits, that doesn't get it. You know, I miss my mom. I'm vaccinated. I'm coming to give you a big hug. I love you, mom. Hi. Do you have anything for pain? Straight down that aisle. Right. Thank you. Young lady, this here is what you need. Ringmaster? Mm-hmm. Ringmaster rubbing oil. Mm-hmm. How does it work? By promoting circulation since 1950. Massage it in for best results. Ringmaster took care of my back pain. Ringmaster got rid of my knee pain, too. Wow. It mm -hmm. sounds like I'm late to the party. I'll take one. Find Ringmaster at CVS, Davis Drugs, and other fine stores. Lawanda. This is R.J. Watkins. Coming to you to bring you some information about the number one detox in the nation. Lemon Burn. Lemon Burn helps to turn the fat into fit. It's for you, a happier, healthier you. Because you know healthy is the new beautiful. An all-natural way to improve your health. It promotes a healthy digestive system, attacks and reduces belly fat, as well as gives you energy. And to get yours today, call 313-868-6612. Don't forget to exercise and eat right. Be part of the biggest citywide community service day in the nation, right here in Detroit. The 15th annual Arise Detroit Neighborhoods Day, Saturday, August 7th, and neighborhoods all over the city. Be part of the Stay Safe Creating Your Space campaign. Register your church, community group, or block club today. Have your volunteers vaccinated and wear a face mask. Host small outside events, such as school supply giveaways and small beautification projects. Register at www.arisedetroit.org or phone 313-921-1955. Last year we played with no fans, just quiet empty stands. It wasn't the same. We want you all in the game. So step up to the plate and make sure you're safe. Wanna take a swing at COVID-19? Get, Get your, your vaccine. vaccine. The COVID vaccine is safe and effective and it's available now. Hey everybody, it's Lawanda inviting you to join me today, Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m right here on 107.5 FM HD2. Go to your FM HD radio and find me. It's radio you can see. I'll be waiting for you.
Good afternoon. I'm Alex Albritton, your host. It is indeed a pleasure once again to don the airwaves and the microphones here at WHPR 88.1 FM. Uh, it's been pretty close to 20 years. <laughs> pretty close to 20 years. We're getting older, Mr. Tyler, but we still look the same, okay? Yeah, and RJ looks the same. He hasn't aged a bit. I don't, I don't know what it is. I guess it must be in the DNA or something, okay? <laughs> well, it's been 20 years. Wow, that's a long time. At any rate, we are here today to talk about two very important subject matters. One is Black Wall Street in Greenwood, Oklahoma, which was the site of a massacre just a little over 100 years ago, June 1st, 1921. Really started May 31st, the day before. The Klan and the U.S. Army joined hand in hand to destroy 35 square blocks of the richest real estate in the country for black folk. That's why they called it Black Wall Street. There was not a business in that district where one dollar did not circulate 37 times before it ever left their community. Now think about that. One dollar circulated 37 times. That's serious buying power. And because it was so successful, the Klan and other white folk wanting to force their white supremacy decided to burn it down. There's a story that goes along with that concerning a, uh, a black shoeshine guy and a white elevator operator uh, claiming that the when she stopped the elevator, because he had to go into a separate building just to use the men's room from where he worked. And when she stopped the elevator, there was a jerking motion that sent him into her body. claiming that the white folk claimed that he attempted to rape her. Nothing could have been further from the truth. But if those of you old enough to remember, back in the old days, that's how those elevators worked. When they stopped, there was a jerking motion inside the elevator. And it threw him across the elevator floor into her. And she swore up and down that, they, that he tried to rape her. Nothing could have been further from the truth. That's what began all that carnage. That's what began the burning down and the massacre of Black Wall Street. There were hospitals, bus companies, retail stores of every ilk, you name it. They had it. It was something like six bus companies just in Greenwood alone. <laughs> six bus companies. That's why our friend Mr. James Durant was so able to sneak in and lay on the floor of one of those buses to save his life. That's where he hid. Be it not for that, he may well have perished because they burned every black human being in sight. There is a movement afoot now, I might add, to identify many of the folk who were just strewn into those mass graves. And I hope that I hope and pray that that effort is successful. It's been a hundred years. 
but they need to be identified. Their loved ones need to know. It's a Holocaust in and of itself, folks. And for those of you who may be watching and want to call in, you know the numbers, 313-868-0342, 313-868-0351, and 313-868, what's that other number, Henry? 4336, thank you, 4336. Getting old, but just a little forgetful, but not too much, okay? At any rate, same numbers as 20 years ago. So give us a call. Uh, and if you, for those of you watching and listening, if you would like to call Senator Joe Manchin, I'll give that number again. Area code 202-224-3954. When they answer the phone, just tell them that you are a U.S. citizen and you want, to, you want them to know that you don't like what Joe Manchin is doing. And you let them know that you want your voice heard. Oh, they're going to ask you where you live, what state you're from. You just let them know that you're a U.S. citizen and you want your voice to be heard. You can give them your name, but don't tell them you're not from West Virginia, okay? It's a shame what they're doing. Put the pressure on Joe Manchin. Make him feel the heat, okay? Make him feel the heat. We need his vote. We need his vote. For the People Act must be passed. It's one of two ways that we can save our democracy and save our right to vote. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it is in serious peril. Serious peril. We don't, we don't, we don't have time is not on our side. As most of you know, they are, they are in 49 states. They are, the Republicans are passing legislation designed to make it impossible for you to cast your vote in a free and fair election. So, we have some things at our disposal. Joe Manchin is one of them, okay? President Biden needs his vote in the Senate. We need that Democratic vote. And if we get that Democratic vote, things will be back to normal. We need federal law. Federal law is the only thing that can protect our right to vote. Because these, these, all these bills they're passing you know, in the various states, they're state law. But it does not trump federal law. Excuse my expression. Doesn't trump federal law. So you call Joe Manchin and you let him know let him know you want you are, you are a U.S. citizen and you want your voice heard. And you deserve the right to vote in a free and fair election. Just like the one we had last November. It was a free and fair election. We want that to continue. And we want our right to go to the polls and cast our votes. Whether we are black, whether we're white, doesn't make a difference. Does not make a difference. We just want to be able to vote, okay? So, Detroit, you have a long, rich history. Rich history of getting behind uh, black candidates, of, of, of making your voice heard when things were, were being done against you. I know you're out there. You make sure you call Joe Manchin because right now, if you sit on your hands, your right to vote is going to be taken from you. 
I mean, taken from you. And once it's gone, it'll be gone. It will be gone. So just, just think about your ancestors who were burned and thrown in unmarked graves and back in, in Greenwood, Oklahoma, June the 1st, 1921. Think about your ancestors. They, they didn't have a right to vote back then. They didn't. Had they had a right to vote, <laughs> I guarantee you, things may have been a little different in Greenwood that weekend. They may have been different. So for God's sakes, please, please, please make your voice heard. We got, we got a little bit of time, just a little bit of time, okay? We got, we got a little bit of time that you got to make it count. You can't, sit, you can't sit back and let this just go by. Because if you do, you're going to hate yourself for the rest of your life. Oh, I had a chance to do something about it and I didn't do it. It's not that kind of party, folks. It's not that kind of party. I'm telling you. So I wanted to come here today to utilize this time that Mr. R.J. Watkins has so preciously given me to educate and to motivate, educate about Black Wall Street and to motivate about our right to vote that is going, going almost gone. We can't let that happen, folks. We can't let that happen. Queen Mother Helen Moore and all the other activists that watch this station and listen to this station, believe me, <laughs> they know how serious this is. I'm telling you how serious it is. We don't have six months to play around with this. I realize we have an, another election in, going on in Detroit and all of that. All that's well and good. But that won't even matter if we lose our right to vote. It won't even matter. So, once again, the numbers here are 313-868. 0342-313-868-4336 or 313-868-0351. If you want to give us a call, feel free to do so, okay? We've got uh, about 20 minutes left in this program, I think. Uh, would love to hear from you, frankly, because uh, the last time I was here, yeah, it was a few months ago, the last time I was here, I had the uh, benefit of interviewing the new Wayne County Sheriff Raphael Washington and introduced him to the listening and viewing audience of this station. And it was indeed a pleasure to do so. Uh, he was a nice guy, a really nice guy. Uh, and right on the heels of the unfortunate passing of Sheriff Benny Napoleon, um, folk who were supporters the voters uh, of the Wayne County Sheriff uh, needed to know uh, that there was his replacement was as qualified and as nice a guy as Raphael Washington. So again, it was a pleasure to be here that morning and introduce him uh, to WHPR's uh, listening and viewing audience. And uh, in a couple years, when he has to run to keep that seat, uh, I'm sure. Uh, WHPR's audience will come out and support him lot, stock, and barrel. Uh, I think he'll, he'll be back over here. I talked to him a few weeks ago, and he wants to come back and do that again. So we'll talk to Mr. R.J. Watkins and see if that can be made possible, okay? Uh, but nevertheless, give us a call, 313-868-0342, 313-868-0351. And 313-868-4336. These are two extremely sensitive and very important subject matter 
that I'm talking about today, particularly your right to vote and your democracy in this country, it is on its way out. You can save it, but you have to get involved. You can save it. Call Joe Manchin, make him cast his vote for the For the People Act. He can do that. He can, he can cast that vote as a Democrat. And this game he's playing will be all over. He's playing with your, your democracy, our democracy. Don't let him do that. Don't let him do that. First of all, it's racist what he's doing. That's the first thing. And secondly, he's, he's playing a game uh, with the old filibuster. And the filibuster was a tool used to keep black folk down. That's why it was used. And he wants to save it. He wants to save the filibuster. Well, guess what? I would submit to you that he and Mitch McConnell are at least 50 years, at least 50 years behind times. We need Joe Manchin's vote. Please, folks, please get the importance of this. This is so important, okay? This is more important than anything that we've ever talked about on these airwaves. Because what, what happens if we lose that? What happens if you can no longer cast an absentee ballot or can't get a, can't get a bottle of water in line while you're waiting to vote? or can't vote on Sundays, you know, souls to the polls. What's, what, what happens if all of, all of that is suddenly gone? Things that have been put there to make it easier for you to cast your vote. Bad situation, real bad situation. So now is the time to make our voices heard and to turn this thing around. But you gotta get involved. You gotta hit the streets and you gotta get involved. We've got to make them know they can't do this to us. They can't do this to us. So don't let this opportunity just slide by. Because believe me, if it does, folks, you'll never see it again. You'll never see it again. Those Trump people and the, and the other Republicans, <laughs> they want to rule this country without a democracy. That's what they want to do. And we can't let them. We can't let them. The other thing is, I think it's time and this is rare, that we can say thank you to the U.S. Senate and thank you to the U.S. Congress for casting their votes to make Juneteenth a federal holiday. That's pretty big. That's pretty big, okay? Should have been done long, 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 long time ago, but it's here now. Okay, the Senate has already vo voted to make it a, a, a federal holiday. They're sending it back to the House, and, and they'll do the same thing, and then they're going to send it to the President Biden's desk for his signature. So all that's really just a matter of, I mean, it's going to happen. It's definitely going to happen. So, I, you know, I think we, we could, I think we could thank the U.S. Senate, even McConnell. We could thank him for that. But there's so much more he needs to do. So much more he can do. He and Joe Manchin both. Okay? They can do it. So I'm doing my part. I'm sitting here today sharing with you 
the importance of those two bills that are before Congress right now. The For the People Act and the John Lewis Act. I can't remember the name of that that other one right now. But both of those acts, are, if, if passed, are federal law. And they will stop all this foolishness going on in the states. Texas and Georgia and Mississippi and Alabama and on and on and on. All these states are paying, and Michigan. They've got laws that they're going to pass because they've got a Republican House and Senate to do it. You see what they tried to do right after the election with the Wayne County Board of Canvassers. <laughs> you saw what they tried to do then. This can be stopped. This can be stopped. I realize it's 75, 80 degrees outside. It's a nice day out. People are out in their cars cooking, whatever, whatever. But I'm telling you, for those of you who are listening, pass the word on. This is a do or die situation. I'm telling you, this is more important than a hairdo, more important than a pedicure, more important than, than the latest rap record, all of that, okay? All of that means nothing absolutely nothing if we don't get those two federal laws passed it won't mean a thing absolutely nothing okay so i would be remiss and i wouldn't be doing what i know i need to do if during this time so richly given by mr rj watkins if I didn't make this viewing and listening audience well aware of what the stakes are. The stakes are do or die. Do or die. Detroit, Highland Park, you need to hit the streets and let Congress know that you're just not going to tolerate this. Let these states, various states know, including Michigan, that you're not going to tolerate it. You're just not going to tolerate it. You have a voice. Use it. Use it. For God's sakes, use it. I'm, I'm just so overwhelmed by what I see being done to us every day I can't even, I, I just, I, it's, it's too much, okay? It's too much. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if all these states pass this legislation that they are, see what they did in Georgia already, Texas, I mean, just it's like 40, 48, 49 states have legislation ready to go, ready to roll. So it can be stopped by federal legislation. They can raise it on the House and on the House floor, Senate floor. They call it up for a vote. This can be done. It can be done. Mitch McConnell is blocking it, and so is Joe Manchin. Mitch McConnell won't let his caucus even vote on it. Period. But you got a voice. So you better use it, because if you don't use it, I'm telling you, six months from now, you are going to be in tears. Because the most precious thing you know of will be gone. Your right to, to participate in a free and fair election, whoosh, gone, forever. Never get it back. Never get it back. If this white supremacy thing is... is, is being pushed through the way it is, believe me, it'll, you'll never, ever, ever get it back. It'll be gone forever. Oh, yeah. 
you know, my voice and other voices still be raising Cain about it. Yeah, sure. But once it goes, we'll never be able to get it back. But please, I beg of you, I beg of you, don't let that happen. Don't let that happen. Because if you do, we will be burnt like a crisp and no one be able, no one will be able to help us no one so i want you to know i've seen times here in the detroit area when black folk hit the street and their activism got things done this is one of those times you need to drop your petty narrow-minded differences and come together doesn't matter whether you're black or white come together and get this thing done please please I don't care whether you remember the 13th 14th doesn't matter come together Make your voices heard as one and get this done. Let these folk know they, can't t they cannot do this to you, but they're trying. So don't just sit up and just watch MSNBC every day and lay back and do nothing about it. You see what's being done. You know what I'm telling you is the truth. You know what I'm telling you is the truth. You got to get on it, and you got to get on it now. Right now. I'm begging you from the bottom of my heart, Detroit, seriously. That's, that's, just how, that's just how serious this thing is. More serious than anything we've ever fought against over the years, okay? More serious than busing from years ago. More serious than... Uh, making sure the Detroit Police Department had African-American police officers in it. It's more serious than that. Uh, it's more serious than the casino referendum. Ten times more serious than that, okay? <laughs> you, won't even, you, won't, <laughs> you won't even be thinking about going down there to gamble if your right to vote is gone. Trust me. You won't be wanting to play blackjack or anything else. You'll be raising all kind of cane. So, you know, just don't take it from me. Don't take it just from me. I'm not the only one you should be listening to. The truth be told, these folk, these Republicans, and these white supremacists want to take your right to vote. And if an election does not go their way, they're passing laws that they can just change the results no matter what. If they don't like it, boom, change the results. Just like they tried to do in the Wayne County Board of Canvassers. Same thing. Same thing. If it were not for some very proactive people here in Detroit, that would have happened. That would have happened. Okay? We came that close. I mean, it was just, just a cat hair. That's how close it was. We can't relive that. <laughs> These folk, they got endless money. That's number one. And they've got millions, literally millions of people in this country that want to see this happen. People just like me and you, okay? The skin color is just different. That's all it is. Their skin color is different. But they want 
they want an autocracy in this country. Forget about democracy. Forget about, you know, one man, one vote. None of that counts. <laughs> We're not, not with what they're doing. So don't be apathetic. Don't be lazy. Don't, please don't do that. Not this time. For God's sakes, don't do it this time. You know, we sat back and we, we, we let all kinds of things happen to us here in Detroit, even though we have a rich history of activism. But this, you got to do. We got to join hands with our brothers and sisters in New York, Cleveland, Atlanta, L.A., Chicago, and on and on and on. We got to join hands with them. We got to stand up and be counted in this country big time. And those who want to roll back the clock 100 years, we can't let them do it. Can't let them do it. So take it from me, Alex Albritton. Everything that we fought for, everything that we fought for is on the line. The whole shooting match. Everything. Can you imagine, <laughs> can you just imagine what, what it would be like in this country if you couldn't vote and knew your vote was going to be cast fairly and honestly? They're trying to turn that around right now in Arizona. So, Detroit, I love you. It's been my pleasure. To, to spend this time with you. I hope I can do it again sometime really soon. Okay? Make your voices heard. Call Joe Manchin. 202-224-3954. And folks, I thank you for sharing this time with me. And as always, I wish you good luck, good health, and God bless.